Hello everybody, this is Toys R Us and for this special figure showcase and review we're going to be looking at the 1988 Autobot Pretender Wave Rider figure. So what we're going to do with this video, we're going to have a detailed look at him in all of his modes, help you decide how you want to display him. I'm going to show you the accessories that come with him to help you know if yours is complete. Because he's a vintage figure, I'm going to point out things that you need to be aware of if you have to purchase him on for yourself. Uh, there is actually a difference between the Hasbro and the Takara version, so I'm going to show you that. And as I'm lucky enough to have a couple of different types of packaging, I'm going to show you the artwork and the fantastic battle scene on the back of that. Now, before we get started, I'd like to remind anybody who's not subscribed to this channel, if you'd like to hit that subscribe button for me now, please, because it really will help me out. Okay, as I mentioned, 1988 Autobot Pretender released by Hasbro and indeed Takara concurrently, even though they've got slightly different names. Now, the Pretender shell, which you can see, is made of the hard plastic at first, and then you've got the helmet and the belt, and indeed his axe, which is made of soft plastic. The Pretender shell itself does actually have some articulation. You can move the arms at the shoulders like so. You can actually remove the helmet, and this is going to lead to something that you need to be aware of straight away you can see that the paint chipped off the head it's something very common with the pretenders purely because of how tight the helmets were now because this is sort of made of a soft rubber same as the axe and the belt it does sometimes get a bit sticky but that can be easily cleaned with washing up liquid and water now the other thing to note is he's got blonde hair the reason why i'm pointing that out is because the takara version is slightly different so if you're looking for yours to be complete this is the helmet with the detail there the axe now this is very very commonly broke um, i've actually got a couple of damaged ones where the handles just snapped off and you can see it looks it gets because of the rubber used it does sometimes get a bit slimy but that's the axe the belt comes off as well uh, but the belt in all honesty and the helmet are mainly sort of used to help hold the shell together so i'm going to take this off be careful as you're taking it off and the other thing to be aware of is the fact that these hold over the clips and these tabs can get damaged very easily the one thing to remember which is a bonus is this is just gold painted plastic it's not actually gold plastic what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take the helmet back off and i'm going to separate this just for now so you can see how the pretender gimmick actually worked so we've got the inner robot that's probably going to fall over so i'll pop it there i'm going to show you this blaster in a second but the pretender fit inside there hence the name pretender so what you've got is you've got the robot let's have a quick look at him first you've got a lovely detailed head sculpt stickers are something to be aware of with this because without stickers he does look incredibly bland now the head will only rotate that way and in fact it won't even rotate it'll press down but that's only for transformation purposes the arms will move up and down and they'll also go back but this is for what we're going to do now so we're going to fold the arms back and indeed we're going to fold the feet down as well now this should if memory serves me correct mean that we can slot him yep there we go into the back of the shell and cue the tagline for pretenders at the time pretenders hide the robots inside i think it was that yeah it even says there hide the transformers inside shall we say i'll correct myself but yeah so that is how you would fit the pretender inside the shell so you know if you haven't got these accessories you are okay it will still hold together um and again the beautiful thing is you can hide it right inside there right let's take him out and let's clip this back together so the actual toy itself and the inside is quite basic to be honest and if i'm being totally honest as i was a child and these were released didn't really like them i appreciate them much more being an adult and because of this which i'm going to come to in a second so let's have a look at the robot again then so we're going to bring the arms forward like so and oh, click the feet over as well right the robot does turn into in fact let's show you the gun first now the gun has got two handles on it the reason being you've got the tiny little port there and you've got the huge five millimeter port there. So you can actually put the gun in the small robot's hand. You can actually attach the gun to the alternate mode at the top, but because you've got the large five millimeter port, you can also put the gun in the shell's hand as well if you wanted to. So again, this is what I really like about them now, the fact that they do have lots of play value um yeah for that reason they're like a mini little play set in one um and again although quite basic for exactly that reason that's why i think they're really good right let's take the gun out of his hand and let's have a quick look at the alternate mode which you can see in fact let's move this back here is there so it's like a mini sort of submarine hence the name 
um, wave rider and diver in the Japanese continuity. So the transformation process, I'm going to upload in a separate video, but you can pretty much tell the legs fold around the side and then you pull these little wings out of the shins which are inside there the head folds down and there's your little turbine it's a shame there's not much more detail on this to be honest you've just got the painted cockpit um but it is what it says it is it suits its purpose and there in fact is your little submarine right let's have a quick look at what i've been referring to then so as i said this is the main reason why my appreciation for the pretend has changed uh the japanese continuity of figures they called him diver but what they also did, um, and unfortunately I can't open this because it is still sealed, you can see he's got brown hair. Um, I need to take the helmet back off, so I'm probably going to damage it even more. But you can see there, nice and carefully, that he's got blonde hair. So they changed the hair colour for the figure. So if you wondered if there was a difference, there actually is. Also in Japan, they had a sort of reference number. The C stood for Cybertrons, which was Autobots, number 203. Now, you probably couldn't see this because of that. Now, if I fold this down and have a look at there, you've got this amazing artwork on the inside. So we've got there, I suppose it's the Pretender process. You can make out a couple of the Pretenders there. There you've got the robot mode, the transform mode, and indeed the full transformation process there. They just made it look so much cooler. And if we turn to the side again, you've got all the pictures we've just saw. And then on the back, this is the same as the Hasbro's boxes. We've got the artwork. Now, to me as a child and to most people who only collect Hasbro, this is the Power Master Optimus Prime with the Pretenders artwork. But if you've seen the cartoon Super God Master Force, that's right. In Japan in 1988, they still had cartoons. And the cartoon that was aired at the time was, in fact, that Super God Master Force. And the Pretenders were main characters. Also, he was referred to as Jinrai, but that's a different story. But as I say, you've got the main artwork there for the cartoon that was being aired. And it was just really, really good. Right, that's a quick look at the Takara one. Now, this is the standard Hasbro box. And there we go. I've obviously got the little inner robot out. There's the standard Wave Rider artwork that you've probably seen before on the boxes. There's the transformation process. And then, as I've said on the back, there's the same image. Beautiful, beautiful artwork. It really is very, very good. There's his tech spec. If you want to read it, you can pause and read that now. It was worth two robot points. And then the other box, just to the left-hand side of the camera, is a Hasbro box, but it's just from a different country. It's dual language. So probably Canadian or maybe French. I think it's Dutch and French actually looking at this. So you've got, yeah, there you go, French. And then I think that's Dutch. Please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, and again, everything else was exactly the same. It was just that it was a dual language. So because it was a dual language, the tech spec is different. And there we go. I think this, in fact, rounds up and finishes off a detailed look at the 1988 Autobot Pretender Wave Rider. Thanks for watching. Take care.